It's those of us that are willing to take the first step that are the ones that are going to begin to find joy like we've never found before. Yeah, and I think that's important. It's not like, you know, there's a point in there where you can feel sorry for yourself for a second. But at the end of the day, it's like, if you don't want to do this thing, what do you want to do? And you need to start investigating. I couldn't just be like, oh, I just don't want to work. I'm just going to take some time. (laughs) I didn't do that. I was like, okay, I know that I'm naturally, I like these things. Who can I start talking to and who can I meet that that can maybe help me figure out if that might be for me. And Welcome to Authentic Conversations. I'm your host, Ryan James Miller, and I believe the way to freedom, fulfillment, and success ultimately comes by living as the most authentic version of yourself. If you're ready to live the life you've dreamed of, you're in the right place. Well, what up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Authentic Conversations. This is a pretty cool episode that I am uh, at the beginning of, and I say cool for a couple of reasons. First of all, you've been hearing over the last probably couple of weeks, months, uh, that this season of Authentic Conversations has been primarily hosting a men into the conversation and talking about vulnerability and struggle and emotion and fear and all the things guys never want to talk about. And yet, if you're watching right now, you're already thinking to yourself, like, what the hell is going on? Because the person on the other side of the screen is not a man. And that's definitely the case. But beyond that, my guest is somebody that I have been connected to for quite a few years now. Uh, From the moment I met her, I was uh, just uh, uh, quickly um, just Uh, engaged into her brand, her message, the way that she carried herself. And she's continued to just um, reinforce what I believed about her and all of the ways in which she has brought so much energy and value into a space that has wasted those words on people uh, that don't deserve them. So with that, I'm welcoming Brittany Crystal to the podcast. What's up? Thank you so much, Ryan. That might be the best (laughs) intro I've ever received. That means so much to me. And I love your message around authenticity because I know the word is so, it gets an eye roll from people who've abused it, but when it's actually real, it, you just feel it. And you know, like we hit it off right away and we stayed in touch and you just know when you're, you're really having like a conversation with somebody and that's actually who they are, whether it's through their content or not. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's really about no bullshit. And I like that. And I think that, you know, from the first time I heard you speak on stage or saw you speak on stage, uh, you know, in LA, it was like, man, she's just like, right there in your face and to the point. And, 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 and that can come across really aggressive, you know, from anybody, but the more that I heard you and saw you and engaged with you, the more that I realized that that wasn't you trying to be some hard ass coming across. It was really your personality and your way to communicate just how serious you were about the things that you were passionate about. And I loved that. And it's come across in your podcast, which by the way, we'll talk about it some more, but that's beyond influential. And, uh, I've been, a huge fan of the podcast for a long time. And so thank you for that. And you have so much experience behind you in marketing and branding, and you've built courses that thousands and thousands of people have engaged into. And I know that message has continued there too. Um, It's also pretty cool because I don't know, I guess if you're like a fisherman or something like that, and you've been fishing for like 20 years and all you've wanted to do is catch that marlin that you heard that other people fish for, but you've actually never seen or caught. Well, that's what it's like having Brittany on the podcast today, because it's (laughs) been like two years of making this attempt. So that's pretty cool too. (laughs) I knew it was going to happen. It was just a matter of time. I think in my mind, I'm like, no, like I, I guess I have it this way where I don't, I don't BS people. So when I say that I'm going to do something, I told you I was going to be on the podcast. I'm like, no, I'm going to get there. It's going to happen. Like as soon as I can make it happen, it's going to happen. And then I was like, you came top of mind. And I was, was like, let's schedule it because yeah, it's really, that's really important to me to to be in integrity and keep my word. And you were talking about being on stage and being aggressive. I think for me, I'm very, I am very direct and that either works for you or it doesn't work for you. And I'm happy with that either way, but I'd like to, I just like to say what I mean. And I also think it's interesting from the male perspective, hearing a woman be way more direct, just that feeling that, you know, you're comfortable with it. Cause I'll, 
I do have a lot of men who listen to the podcast and consume my content and they're all in on it. But I also know that, you know, women take women do take a lot of shit for being that way in the workplace. I now get to be this way all the time. I get to be myself, but I also work for myself. So I have that freedom to to be like, well, take it or leave it. Yeah. And, I'm, you know, we've heard it said a lot. And I think that it, a lot of credit is owed to, you know, not automatically assuming that because, you know, somebody comes out very direct or very aggressive that the guy's the asshole, the woman is the bitch. And I think that, you know, women take a lot more heat for that than men do traditionally anyway. Um, and, and people can absolutely be that, but I don't think that that's the result of them being direct. I think that's the result of them being an asshole. <laughs> so like they, they, they own that. Um, so, okay. Uh, so talking about, um, uh, kind of, what this journey that you've been on. So uh, we talked about this a little bit offline. I want to dig into this because I think it's really relevant uh, for the conversations that I'm having presently. Um, and, and you use the word freedom, which is a word that I use all the time. Ultimately, I'm trying to help people live a life of freedom to do what they want, when they want, with the people that they want. And little by little, again, from a distance, I've watched you do that. You went from um, lots of agency life, working for other people to you start your own business. You like hyper speed uh, come out and launch and you're coaching and you're teaching and you're building courses, which is consuming crazy amounts of time. It looked like the podcast was going really well. And then at least again, from an outside perspective, it seemed like, and, and this was a little bit in line with COVID. Uh, so I thought maybe that was part of it too, but you kind of hit the brakes. Mm -hmm. And I even heard you say a few different times that you were intentionally taking some break to reevaluate what you're, you know, what you were going to do next. So um, however you want to fill that in, I am interested to hear like, what led to that and what some of those thoughts were, because there's a lot of people out there that are now, even though we're 18 months post pandemic or the beginning of the pandemic, not post pandemic, um, they're, they're trying to figure out like, what the hell do I do with my life? Like everything feels overwhelming. I don't, I'm handcuffed. I can't make decisions. So what was that process like for you? So I'll definitely just to give some more context, but I'm down to get in deep in this conversation before I was even at the agency, just for people to know I'm a lawyer and I graduated law school, passed the bar and I left law right away to go into entertainment. So I've pivoted and then go, went into marketing. So I've pivoted and had to make those sacrifices basically my entire working career in order to basically try something and then realize it's not for me and then needing to make a decision that might be unpopular with my peers, might be unpopular with my family, might be unpopular in general. And might now at the, now everybody's like, oh, that makes so much sense. But at the time, people thought that was crazy. Like you don't just, you know, get your law license and then quit law right away. Okay, wait, can, I'm, I'm gonna pause you already. I hate to do this, but you, no. you just said like, make a decision for me. And so yeah. this started years and years prior. So what was that lens? Like, how did you begin to create a lens that you could look through that allowed you to make decisions for yourself versus for all of these outside distractions and other people and everything around you? Well, really it came from not being, ultimately not being happy. So I was somebody, I graduated from college in three years. I was always just very ambitious and very career driven. And I was also kind of, educated in the, like the safe route would be to go to law school. And I'd wanted to work in entertainment. So I took the safe route based on kind of everybody telling me, like taking advice from people who I thought knew better than me, who were older than me, who were wiser than me, who were successful from a monetary perspective. But you know, this is the, they weren't lawyers. It was just the advice they were giving. Education was the way that's the boomer, it was the boomer mentality. Yeah. And as I like in law school, it started for me where I was just like, this does not feel right what other, what else can I do with it? And I kept being reassured that no, the practice is different. Nobody likes law mm -hmm. school. And then through like actually doing, you know, during the summers, also I was in law school and now I look at it as very fortunate. I was there during the last recession. So I was in law school around 2008, 2009, people were canceling their summer programs, all of the things, the like easy promise to in quote success. 
everybody was shutting that down. That was taken away. People weren't sure what was going to go on. And that also starts. And I think that's kind of like what's been going on now that starts the, oh my gosh, this might not be the safe path or whatever. Where do I want to go with this? Do I really want to fight to be in this profession? Or is this even intriguing to me? Because really for me, like the two jobs that I had in the summer, great people at those firms. They're awesome. I'm in touch with them. But like, I didn't see anything that I was like, I can dedicate 40 years of my life to this. I didn't see anybody that I aspired to have their their careers. I was just like, I can't do this. This doesn't even fit with my personality. None. I don't like the work. I'm, and I think here was a thing was I had been going like so many people. It's like, oh, when, if you make a certain amount of money, then, okay, then you can do what you want or that sort of thing. So I was like, oh, when, when I'm making X amount, that'll be fine. And during those summer jobs, I was making what would be a six figure salary. And I was very unhappy. I was like, I cannot do this. I can't imagine this being the thing that I do every day. I just didn't like it. And so I was like, there, there, there has to be something else. How do I start figuring it out? And I was doing it during school, but I was starting to have those conversations with peers and they were like, you know, oh, you've come this far and they weren't really getting it. And I was trying to have it with my family. And I think ultimately I was just like, you know what? I was smart enough to get here. I'm going to get this license. So nobody says that I can't do it, but if I'm resourceful enough to be at Georgetown law school and, you know, pass the New York bar, then I'm resourceful enough to, to do something else. (laughs) I don't know exactly what it is, but like, let's go. And the world right now is so great because back when I graduated in 2010, this job that I have or what I do now, this didn't exist. Mm. This is all new. And so at that time, you had to network your face off in person and be trying to reach out to people and hoping that they answered. It wasn't like it is today where, you know, had I done even more investigating on lawyers and law really before law school, I probably would have talked to some just on Zoom and been like, no, like this isn't for me. I'm going to investigate something else. So this is honestly, if you're looking for a pivot or a change, this is the greatest possible time. This is really how I got so sucked into the personal brand stuff is because that is how you control and create your future and create your life. And like for me, I'm all about helping people create and live an authentic, influential life on their terms, whatever influence means to you. And also being myself. And I think being in myself in the legal environment, being myself in the entertainment environment, even being myself anytime I've worked for somebody I got to be more and more myself as I was pivoting, but now it's like, I get to be me and there is nothing better than that. Like I get to, I get paid to be me or like people come to me for their advice. They already know because I've been branding myself and putting myself out there, what they're going to get. They know I'm directing this way. They know these things. So that way it cuts out so much of that, that angst because they already, they already get a sense of who I am. So I, I, I don't know if that answered your question, but I was basically like, had to figure it out. Out And it was just being at that point where I was like, I can't do this. And guess what? Like me staying in this job or me staying in this role on this path doesn't, it's not going to benefit anybody. It's not going to benefit my relationships, my partners, my, it's not going to help anybody. Like it just makes other people mentally feel good that, you know, their daughter's a lawyer or whatever, that they feel like I'm being taken care of, but it's not, it wasn't sustainable and I can't do anything. That's not, I'm willing to put in the work and eat shit if it's, building towards something. But Mm -hmm. if it's just my life every day and I don't see a way out, like that's, that's horrible. And so I couldn't take it. Well, and, and what I appreciate that you said in there was I wasn't happy. There had to be something better. And I think that we all, not we all, so many people get to that place, right? Whether it's a dead end job or they're running a business and they're over it and they're so frustrated relationship. And I, and I hate to bring that into it because I don't want to push people out of, you know, marriages, but it's like they get to these places and it's like, I'm over it. I can't do this anymore. I'm not happy. Something's got to change. It's got to be better. But then they freeze or maybe they read a couple of books, they get inspired, but then they freeze. Whereas you were willing to say, I'm going to eat shit. And eating shit for you at that time was, I'm going to walk away from a significant amount of security financially, right? Because it wasn't just the six-figure salary. It was all of the upward mobility in that six-figure salary that was near guaranteed to you for the rest of your career. 
At the same time, you had a family that was very proud of their daughter being in school, doing so well, graduating, going on to have this degree and then this profession. And you had to look at them in the face and say, I don't want to do it. And, and you had to eat that too. And, 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 you, and you were then willing, even looking all that in the face, to take the necessary steps. And I think that is lesson number one that people really need to take away from something like your story is we all get to that point. It's those of us that are willing to take the first step that are the ones that are going to begin to find joy like we've never found before. Yeah, and I think that's important. It's not like, you know, there's a point in there where you can feel sorry for yourself for a second. But at the end of the day, it's like, if you don't want to do this thing, what do you want to do? And you need mm. to start investigating. I couldn't just be like, oh, I just don't want to work. I'm just going to take some time. <laughs> I didn't do that. I was like, okay, I know that I'm naturally, I like these things. Who can I start talking to? And who can I meet that, that can maybe help me figure out if that might be for me. And, and during that time, like I said, we're in different times now. I ended up having, and this was also an interesting time because I ended up having maybe around like four or five jobs in like a five year span. And even again, people were like, you're like job hopping wasn't so much a thing. It's like you go into a, into a job and then you're supposed to stay there for however long or for forever. And in the entertainment business, that's not kind of, that's not the way it works. It's not the way it works with uh, just, you have to start at the bottom as the assistant and then you're working your way. And a lot of times people stay for a year and then they move to another place. But basically like working at a talent agency is usually the training ground that you can go to these other places. So that's where I started. But I still didn't know, but I still needed to go through, sit there, think that that's what maybe I wanted to do, experience it, and know that that wasn't the right path. So now what? where can I go from there? And I think that you can do that so much faster now. Like you can move so much faster. You can meet people so much more quickly. Like all of those people that I actually had to try to meet in person and get them to read a resume, which is what they did. Now you can, you know, DM people and build connections on LinkedIn and and really figure it out for yourself or start things. Side hustling wasn't a thing. Entrepreneurship hadn't, actually that's a lie because I did think about entrepreneurship when I was in law school because my best classes were negotiations and an entrepreneurship class. But I didn't think of myself like, I didn't think like, oh, I want to build a business. That wasn't at all in the wheelhouse at that time. And yeah. now it's so obvious that that's where I was going. <laughs> well, and the other great thing that, you know, you said, and <clears throat> which um, brings to some more present day context, though, I, I, I don't want to finish this historical walkthrough, but, you know, you talked about that's why you put so much emphasis on personal brand and still to this day. And that's why you can make a lot of the decisions you do is because of the brand that you created for yourself, you have been creating for yourself. And so as people are in that space of, I don't know what to do. I know I'm not happy where I'm at. Like one of the first steps they should take is making sure that that brand is intact, right? Because 100%. that's going to carry them. Oh my gosh. So this was, a, and again, like I'm thinking about 10 years ago and to now at that time, you had to rely on whatever your old boss or your manager or a few people had to say about your work. And if they do not like you or did not like you, or you, <laughs> even if you were incredible at what you did and your person did not, doesn't like you for whatever reason and doesn't want to recommend you you're screwed. Like that's the, that's your personal brand is what is your reputation is what people say about you. But here I love it. Cause you can go directly to market. So anybody who said it, like, let's just pretend that the people I work for are like, nah, I don't want, like, I don't want to recommend her or whatever. You could go to my podcast. You can listen and know if you like my expertise, you can hear this episode and be like, Oh no, I like her, that person, whatever, like whatever their problem was, who cares? you go directly to market. And I think that's so awesome. And then you can take that with you and you get to craft and cultivate it and really build these relationships that to me, it makes it that no, but no one person can destroy your career. And working in Hollywood, I work with people and work for people that if they wanted to, they could destroy you. That was a thing that, that that's how, that's how power works. We've seen a lot of things since then from the Me Too movement and whatnot, but, but that's how it worked. And now you can control that. And that's also something I'm so passionate about because I did work in a lot of those very aggressive environments that you're just expendable. You're not important until you're at a certain point. And I never wanted to feel powerless again. And so for me, there's a lot tied up into why personal branding was such a big thing for me and why I'm such an advocate for it, because I really feel like that's my, who I am. And like sharing that with people is my power, especially against 
people who might have other things to say, or even if they don't, it's just an insurance policy. Yeah, no, 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 that's, that's really good. Okay, so you, you step into this realm of entrepreneurship, which was very foreign uh, back then, trust us kids, 11 years ago, that was a lot different than it is right now. <laughs> um, and, and so you, you make this conscious decision to go find your happiness elsewhere, to claim that power that you deserved to have over yourself. And so you step into the world of entrepreneurship. And uh, I'm sure to you, um, it felt like it took a while, but I mean, you came out guns a blazing um, pretty hard uh, into that arena and seemed to find some success pretty quickly. Am I correct? Yeah. And I think here's the thing it's for me, there's, especially when you're in your thirties now, there's no overnight success. Like everything that I was able to take and start my business with, I've been accumulating that knowledge for the last decade, mm -hmm. not more. So, so to me, it's not like I was coming out of the gate with nothing. So just to give people context, after entertainment, I went to work at Vayner Media and Gary Vee moved me to New York to work on his personal brand team. And that's where I really first discovered personal branding in the way that we see it today and how powerful it was. And so that's when things started clicking for me because I knew at that point I wanted to start a business. I just didn't know what it would be. So I knew that I was, I was bitten by that because I really did want the freedom and the autonomy, but I didn't have the idea until... I went to work for Gary and then I fell in love with it. I didn't expect to fall in love with it. I thought I'd build something else. And uh, once I developed that, I realized I had that expertise and I was working, basically I could replicate what I was doing with him with other people and do it successfully. That's when I knew that basically I was at New York at the time and I wanted to move back to LA. I wanted to be able to travel. I didn't want to have to be restricted to, you know, anyone telling me who my clients would be and whatever. And I already had people wanting to work with me. So for me, my step into entrepreneurship was very, it wasn't as just like stopping. And then I got to decide what to do. I walked away. Like I had like a nice bridge. I already like more than replaced my salary when I left with clients that I had on the outside already. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was a nice, you know, move for me. But at the same time, that also presents different issues being being like being on people's teams or being a coach and whatever, your clients don't always listen to you. And so for me, <laughs> I am very much, if I'm telling you to do something, it's because I'm doing it too. And so I knew I wanted to start the podcast Beyond Influential in 2016, I regret starting it in 2017, but I, I wanted to wait till I was free to, to speak freely. And basically like I was encouraging my clients at the time to, to be obviously putting out their own content, helping them do it. And I was like, you know what? I need to be putting out my own content. I need to be taking this seriously for myself. I'd already been posting and talking about branding and that sort of thing for maybe around a year before I stepped out and started the podcast. But that was really like, I'm going to make this commitment. I know how important content is this is what I want to be doing. This is what I want to be talking about. And so when I started Beyond Influential, that was, talk about this sometimes that I knew that when I started that podcast, that was going to be a minimum three-year commitment. And I was, I was committed to it. And I knew it was something that I could sustain because I would be having interesting conversations and it was via audio. And so that was like a big thing for me where then I started that. And then at the same time, I was also posting, we met through that LinkedIn event but I was posting on LinkedIn. I saw what traction was happening there. I was also posting on Instagram and other places, but really focusing Instagram and LinkedIn. And between that and the clients, it just started, everything did start just taking off. And then at a certain point, just for the trajectory of the business, I realized that I only, I only had so many, so much time for those people that I was working with. And I was like, well, how do I scale this? What else do I want to be doing? What else is interesting? And so courses were the next iteration for me because I was like, I really want to help these entrepreneurs who can't, maybe couldn't afford me to be a coach or I you know, don't have time or whatever, what have you. How do I take what I've been doing and what I know works and systematize it? Mm -hmm. And so then I had to learn that business of, yeah. How okay, to build I, out I, I want to get there because yeah. I remember a yeah. specific 
uh, uh, series of posts. I don't know. I have the worst memory, but there's something <laughs> that I remember about you er, in early course creation that I want to get back to. Um, but before I do that, uh, there was something that I put a placeholder on a few minutes back that you said. And so you talked about um, you had been building um, kind of this path all along uh, through the other decisions that you were making, through the other things that you were doing. But then you also said that it was what you were passionate about. And, and, and it was what was kind of coming from you. So, so many times I hear advice given and I get it, but I, the advice given to people is go find a problem, figure out how to solve that problem and create a business around that. And I totally get that. The problem that I have with that is too often people end up in businesses that they are not passionate about, and they're typically not good at, even if they're successful. Whereas you said, I believed in my brand. I knew what I wanted out of it. I had this natural inkling to uh, media and marketing and entertainment that aligned with what I wanted and what I was good at, the client started to reflect back to me that that was what I was good at. And so it only made sense to step into a lane that you were good at and you were passionate about and people wanted from you. And so do you feel like that is traditionally better advice for people is to tap into those things as they seek to make especially professional decisions uh, as it relates to career? Or do you still think the adage of, and you could just totally blow up my theory of find a problem, solve it, build a business around it is the way people should go. I think whatever is sustainable for you is the way people should go. Cause there are some people who like, they could just solve the problem and then they can, like, they think in a very different way. I've met these people where they're like, okay, well, what I need, it's, it's self-awareness, like what you need to feel satisfied in the business. For me, I really need to feel like I need to feel invested. I need to feel excited. I need to feel like, I need to feel a certain way about my business for me that I know that if I don't enjoy it, I'm not going to be able to sustain it, especially if it's based on around me. Mm. But there are some people who it is like, they think that way where it's like, Oh, if I can solve this problem and I can scale it that way, that's, inter you know, that it, that's interesting to me. And then I can live the life that I want. And it's not, it doesn't matter if I don't feel uber passionate about that. I'm passionate about the results that it's bringing me and that's enough to sustain it. So that's where it's like knowing yourself, but I can't yep. show up. I've never been good for whatever reason. I'm not good at kissing ass. I've never been good at it. Like I'm not good at faking it. So if I don't like something, it is very obvious. <laughs> so for me, I know that about myself. So it's like, I can't be involved in stuff that I don't like because the energy is just out there. So that wouldn't work for me. And so, yeah, if you can find the thing that it's like, you're passionate about, you're trying it and then you're stepping out and you're, and it's evolving into a business like mine did. That's fantastic. And I knew it was monetizable because, you know, these agencies were monetizing this and I was mm -hmm. being paid to do this for other people. So I knew, I knew it was something people would, would pay for in that way. And so that was I already had, like, I wasn't entering with a completely new product that nobody had ever heard of with just like a dream and a gleam in my eye. It, it was something that like I knew people were paying for. So that was easier in that way. But I would definitely, I do think people should look at what they're, you do have to look at what you're good at and what you're passionate about. But ultimately it's like, can you do this? Would you be happy doing this for three years at least mm. minimum? Would you be happy doing this if it doesn't, what if it's not making money? Are you still happy doing this? Are you okay with that? What are you okay with? And that's where you have to really start. Like, what are you, what are you okay with? Cause some people don't, lawyers are usually risk averse, but I have, I guess, a higher tolerance for risk, but like, what is your risk tolerance? Are you okay with, with leaving a job and then building this thing? Or do you want to dabble and start a side hustle first? Do you need a certain amount of money set aside first for you to feel good? Do you have family, you know, family things is a big thing. If you're married and you know, you got to talk to your partner about it, or if you have children or whatever financial responsibilities. But I think all of that comes back to like, what do you want out of your, what do you want out of your job? For me, I'm so work, I'm so work focused that I cannot work in an environment that doesn't excite me or doesn't do it for me. But some people like aren't really about work. Like work is just a thing that's a vehicle to get, you know, 
get paid so they can go do whatever else they enjoy. And that's fine for them. That just wasn't fine for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it definitely would not be fine for, is not fine for me, which is why I'm in a similar position. Um, okay. So um, I think this is a testament to your character and your tenacity, which I saw from the beginning. And it was another place that I really felt like gangster respect for. And what it was, was I think it was probably maybe in the middle of 2019. Uh, was that about when you started to build courses for the first time? Yes. Okay. That's so, when I first started to, was it the end of 2018 into 2019? At the end of 2018 into 2019 was when uh, my first course came out. Yeah. Okay. So I remember specifically that there was this, a period of time, and I don't know how long it was, but you talked about the fact that you basically like went into the cave and you were grinding it out to learn how to build courses, to learn how to make them work, to learn how to get them to launch. I mean, it was just like, at that point, you probably could have just paid somebody to do everything, even if it would have been a big stretch. To do, you just, you could have done that. But there was this desire you had inside of yourself to go figure it out and then to grind it out in order to to do it the first time, uh, which by the way, that was uh, one of the uh, affirmations for me that I did not want to get into that world. Um, but, um, but I had so much respect for that, Brittany, because again, like we get to these places where we think that we're above something, or we get to this place where we're like, that's just too much. I just don't want to deal with that right now. I'm just going to figure a, another way out. And so where does that come from? I mean, I, I, I can hear it in you, but, you know, to, to all of a sudden just say, I'm going to block everything else for this period of time. And I'm just going to go grind as hard as I can to figure out how to make this work. And so where does that come from? And why do you feel it necessary to apply to things like that? I just want to say that if, if I knew that there was a great way to just outsource it, I probably, no, I probably wouldn't have because so here's the thing going into, I always think that you need to know enough to be dangerous in your own business. So if I'm going to be building courses, why would I just pay somebody to like handle everything and not understand what's going on? That doesn't make any sense to me. If it's in my business, like whether it's me hiring somebody or whatever, like I should, I need to know what's going on because otherwise that's where you get taken advantage of or things happen or just all sorts of, you leave yourself up to all sorts of issues if you just want to pass it off. And I think that happens a lot. I know where there are places where it's like, okay, like you need to hire a lawyer for this specific thing or an accountant for this specific thing. And there's always things in your business that you're not going to like so much. There's plenty of things that I don't like so much, <laughs> but I knew for me, it was like, I need to understand. I just needed to understand the business. And also just for the course, it really mattered to me. I've seen, actually, I will tell a quick story. I had, I had a client at some point who wanted me to build a course for him and was going to share, like do a revenue share. But the problem was he didn't want to be involved at all. And here's the issue with that. If you don't want to be involved in all at all, and you're the expert in a certain area that I'm not an expert in, how the hell am I supposed to build? I think that is so lacking in integrity and ridiculous mm -hmm. that it's like, well, then that was also one of the things where I started moving away from client work in general, especially a certain type where I was like, I don't care if you can pay for it. I'm not like the whole point of the personal brand is for you to be you and you to be like, I need your voice. I need your words, your expertise. But if you don't even have that and I'm going to build a course with my own, basically my own ideas, why wouldn't I just build it as myself? Mm -hmm. And so my big thing, it's like, I'm the one who helped build these personal brands. I have the system. I hadn't systematized it yet and gotten it out, mm -hmm. but I needed to know that it worked. I needed to like get those thoughts out. It needed to be my process for this. Because like at that time, I wasn't reading tons of, I didn't learn that stuff from reading marketing books. Mm -hmm. I learned how to build personal brands from doing it hands-on. And so nobody could come in and, and build this course for me. That wasn't going to be the case. And then for me, it's just interesting because I needed to learn how to, yeah, okay, there's people do webinars, they do sit, they do all of these different things. And I need to learn the rules in order, in order to break them. I think that's mm -hmm. something that I've always just known in general. I've always been that way where I like to learn I like to learn how it's done so then I can keep what I like and do get rid of the stuff that I don't like and create it my way. And so for me, it was just important to kind of get it out there and force myself to, to build a course. And now at the end of the day, I don't know if I'm, 
I love like teaching in that step-by-step manner, but it really helped me reverse engineer what I was doing in my head. Cause that was the biggest thing for me was I wanted to help these people and I needed to like, I needed to get it as close as I could to having the experience of me being there. Yeah. And I think that's what always differentiated me from the market. Cause I knew how to build, like I had this actual experience. I wasn't just regurgitating what somebody else said about personal branding. Yeah. Well, okay. And, and, and that is, that's actually what I was hopeful you were going to say, though. I, I wasn't necessarily thinking that's what you were going to say as I was formulating the question. But the reason I say that is because, you know, too many people hire uh, an expert like yourself based upon credentials right? Uh, you graduated from X university or you worked at da, 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 da. And those things are fine. Like even people hearing you say, and, and, and I know it's something to be absolutely proud of. And I would never take away from like you working for Gary and being there very early in his most recent explosion. Like those things are amazing, but the value you bring is in the fact that you are doing it over and over and over again in the trenches, you know, in big, big strategy for yourself and for other people in a no nonsense way, you're not willing to cave on integrity. You're going to tell it like it is like these to me are the characteristics that should determine whether or not somebody hires somebody like you. And yet most people have been conditioned to do the exact opposite. (laughs) that's because people want to get the shortcut or like there's only, I think that's another thing too, is people don't know how to evaluate. They don't know how to evaluate the people that they're trying to hire to do whatever it is. And this is what I'm saying about the knowing enough to be dangerous. Like I was running my own Facebook ads, for example, before I even hired somebody. Cause I, I know like that's a major investment. So you need to know something you need to know like enough about it or at least ask the questions. So that way you can, you can hire the right person for you. And it's not just about credentials, especially if you're hiring somebody. Cause I just think about the, uh, I'm just thinking about all of the times when I was doing personal branding and, and people just want to outsource it right away. And it's like, no, you want somebody who truly understands your brand and all of these different components. So yeah, I lost you actually on that question. I'm like thinking about what you were saying. Cause I hadn't. No, 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 no. You, 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 you definitely, I mean, you reinforced the point, I, I think so well in that. So. Oh, you, I was going to say, I think I was going to say, sorry to cut you off uh, about no. the Gary thing. It's like, that was so, listen, Gary was a game changer moment for my career. The next, the real game changer in my career was building my own personal brand. That's where everything was coming together. But for me, the Gary thing, it's like, that's great. But the last time I worked for, like I left in 2017, I wouldn't still be around if I wasn't great at what I did. Mm-hmm. Like people wouldn't still be talking to me just because I worked on Gary's team at that point. Like that's, right. I just think that, you know, it'd be one thing if we were a year out maybe from it, but at this point in my career, I'm like, that's, you know, that was a, it, it was a major point and turning point in my evolution yeah. But yeah, nobody, nobody would care if I worked with him, if I couldn't, if I didn't have the chops for it at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, back to, again, I'm only one person, but you know, when I first heard you speak, I didn't know that. Um, when I, when I, uh, you know, felt uh, very impacted by what you said, I didn't know that every time I've listened to a podcast, I've never, that that's not the lens I think through when I think about referring somebody to you or something like that, I, I wouldn't be like, Oh yeah, well, I got to make sure that I tell them this, mm-hmm. like it, it, it's far more about you and what you've done. And I think, you know, again, even just through the last 20 minutes of you storytelling, it, it's clear that it's you that knows what you're talking about. And it's the collective of all you've gained through this. And like you said, taking what you want, discarding what you don't and creating your own in the process. And so I think that that is so much more powerful. Um, and it's something that people deeply need to consider whether they're going to hire some Somebody, or whether they're going to step into an avenue themselves, particularly when they're going to go into business for themselves, you know, it's going to, you got to prove it. There's just too many idiots out there that, you know, they figured out the formula. And so they go out and they market themselves as this guru and they haven't done shit. And, you know, they want to charge all kinds of money because of it. I'm like, you're an absolute joke. You have nothing to show for it at all. Yeah, you just can't show up like that. That's the thing, again, coming back to the how I can show up and maybe it's just me, but I need to show up. 
I need to show up in integrity. I need to feel good about it. I can't, that was the thing about the course too. And probably what also answers your last question. I needed to know that this thing worked. I needed to know that it was the quality that I expect. I needed to know, like I needed to feel in order to sell something, I needed to believe in the product. I don't think I, I wouldn't feel unless it was incredible or whatever. If I found the perfect partners to help build this thing, I don't think I'd necessarily feel that way. I knew that I needed to, I needed to very much control that content in order to feel like, no, this is, this has what you need. And then if I needed to add or change anything, I could, I just needed to know what I was putting out there. It just didn't feel good to kind of like slap a white label on something and put it out. I've never felt good about that sort of thing. Just doesn't work for me. And I have all the respect for you for that. (laughs) So you, um, so, so you create courses, you're selling courses, you're collaborating with other people. Uh, I, I saw for a period of time, um, but it seems like you've stepped away from most of that. And yes. so <laughs> what, what, what's happened then? And I guess maybe that was the very first question I asked you once we went live to record was you have, I mean, you were a lawyer successfully. Mm-hmm the beginnings of a career, you step away, you go into entertainment, successful, you step away, you go into marketing and branding, successful, you step away, you start a business for yourself, you get successful, and not step away, but now you make a pivot again. And so I'm thinking that this is a, um, a a constant desire to uh, be happy and to be empowered to do what you want to do. But this last one feels pretty big because um, you, 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 in many ways, it feels like you took this in, in, in a very healthy way, like this big breath of like, I just need to take a breath. I, I need to kind of step back. Um, I need to think through, I know you went through some, you know, you got married. Uh, then there were some other personal life challenges too. Then just the challenges that we've all gone through. And so there's a lot that must've went into that, but what was that process of getting to where you are today? And then I can't wait to hear, cause I don't even really, uh, I'm not hundred percent clear to where you are right now, hundred percent, which I'm excited to hear, but what was that like and, and why this next shift? It's funny because I was talking to basically my like number two who helped me with the operations and everything. And I was telling her, I actually sent her a voice memo the other night. I was like, I have no idea how I was doing all of the things that I was doing over the last few years, like all at the same time. I have no clue. I have no idea how I was working, how I was basically like, you know, speaking and coaching. And I started a membership in 2020 that now is, we can talk about that, that now we don't have anymore. And I was relaunching, I launched, was relaunching my LinkedIn course. And then I launched my clarity course. Like I was doing all of the things. So I built out like another course. I was doing all of the things. And basically in 2020, I went in doing all of the things. And I thought that the world was going to be normal. This was right before everything kind of hit. And so I took that February, I'm just going to kind of walk you through. I took that February and I was reworking the funnel, which sounds as not fun as it is for the LinkedIn laws and course. And it took like, I'm just not a web. I don't love doing the like webinar stuff, the like all of those things. I love the sales portion of it in that. I think it's, I love knowing how copy works. I love knowing what works for people and all of those things, but the nitty gritty of doing all of the work and then needing to show up to, to kind of like do your spiel. I didn't love the way it was. I don't love that kind of sales tactic type of thing. And so I know that it works, but I've always been looking for like maybe other ways to sell courses or do different things that would work better for me that really work for my wheelhouse. But anyway, I knew I needed to get through February, finish out this funnel. And then I was supposed to be traveling in March. That didn't end up happening. So what did end up happening instead is kind of the world shut down. And I was still pushing myself. I'm still putting out, not only am I putting out the podcast every week and making whatever other content that I'm making, but I also had started a, um, a membership which I think I'd started it as beta and I never fully launched it, but I had 50 people in beta. um, And it was interesting because I thought it was going to be one thing. It ended up being more teaching and I needed to like bring in guests every month. And I was, I I was doing too much. 
I was definitely doing too much and I was doing it throughout the year. So then by the time I got to May, I was presenting in other people's groups and I'm still running this membership plus doing all these other things. And it just got to this point where, oh, I, then I started bringing people on. And here's a, I mean, we can talk about hiring and mistakes that I made in my business, but I was just so underwater right around like the May time. I brought somebody in to kind of help project me. I brought somebody in who wasn't the right fit. And then I ended up doing a lot of the work myself. And so I was basically killing myself for most of 2020, just like grinding myself, not stopping working again. Also pandemic time, I had been traveling a lot. Like I'd been doing all these things pre pandemic. I'd, you know, been working out, doing all this stuff. Pandemic hits messes up my whole, my whole flow. (laughs) So now I'm not leaving. I'm staying home. I'm just constantly thinking about like building out courses and, and what we need to change in the funnel. And I had to launch this course by June of that summer for this bundle that ended up being a huge wash because of, you know, things going on in society. There were just all of these things. I just kept hitting roadblock after roadblock and kept muscling through it. And the muscling through it was burning me out. (laughs) And that's, I mean, it's so obvious that I was going to come to a place of burnout because that's, how could I not? It was like over promise. I wasn't just over promising. I was delivering but I was killing myself in the process. I just was not feeling good. Like I wasn't feeling good physically. I wasn't feeling good mentally. And it really drove like that until really probably the fall of 2020. And like, I don't even know how I did it for so long, but I was not, I just kept grinding it out and kind of making changes. And basically by the end of the year, I was like, no, let's scrap. I'd hired, I'd like eight people or 10 people on my team at a certain point. I was like, no, we're, we're not doing this. I don't even like, that's the thing is there were so many things and I I had brought people on before I really had the systems. I was hoping that I was hiring. And here's the thing, like I had gotten people who had been referred from other people who supposedly could come in and, you know, build out these systems. But at the end of the day, it was like, I wanted people who knew more than I did about the thing that they were doing and they Mm -hmm. didn't, but I needed to deal with my now like people who work for me. And then also do be the face and do all the things. So it was just like an overwhelming amount of work. And it was like, well, what's even the return? Like I'm killing myself at this point. I'm not enjoying this at all. This Mm -hmm. is just not, not good. And so going into 2021, the plan was to really focus on what I actually like to do and where my time should be spent. And I think around that time was unfortunately my husband's mother passed. And so there was just a lot of she raised him, like, is the p- person in his life. And so that, I think being, putting myself aside and being there for my partner was really important, especially that is why you work for yourself. So I, you know, I was more quiet on social. We weren't going anywhere. I didn't feel like it was appropriate. It wasn't, didn't really feel like, you know, the time to be doing that kind of thing. But I was, I was still recording episodes and still, um, still putting in the work. I knew I wanted to launch basically the clarity course, which is the like first step that if I don't care if you've built a brand before and you have a huge brand or you haven't branded a day in your life, this is the first step that I go through with everybody. I actually did this, did the exercises in my own clarity course for myself recently, because that's like what it is. And so basically I was putting all this effort just to give you the timeline into relaunching this clarity course because I didn't have the funnels for it built out or the webinar and all of those types of things. So I got that done by the end of May and just the amount of work that it took. It's like, it sucks because, and this is just me being really honest. It's like, if you have this awesome fucking product, sorry, I don't know if I can swear on this podcast. You can do whatever you want. Okay. I have this awesome fucking product, but if nobody knows about it, it's not going to (laughs) move. And so you do need to build out some kind of sales process or sales funnel. And so to do that about something that I'm really passionate about the product, but not built the entire process of building it out. And I had some people help with copy, but even that's not enough. Mm -hmm. Like realizing that it's like when you have courses, it is like a whole it's, it's way harder than people think. There's a lot more that goes into it just in general. It's not like you can just like hire somebody and then it's going to sell. That's not how it works. And so without getting into all of the nitty gritty of it, basically by the end of May, I was just like, I'm so tired from building this out. That's like, I just want to stop right now. Cause like I, what I really like doing 
and this is what we're going to come back to is I love creating content and I love having conversations. The podcast this entire time, it's been right in front of my face that that's like the obvious thing that I love, that I'm really great at doing, that other people really love and get tons of value from. But that wasn't where my focus was. Mm -hmm. Like it was, I was always obsessed with it, knew it was like a huge like pillar of the brand, but but I hadn't gone in a hundred percent on that because I was busy with all of this other stuff that's that is monetizing, it is making money. But again, it's coming back to the I think I realized this a while ago. You can make money so many different ways. It doesn't need to look like everybody else has it looking. And I think that's part of it too, is with the uh funnels and me focusing on building these courses. Other people had been talking, you people kind of get in your head and I kind of, I push them out where it's like, oh, well, you have to be doing this. You're, you're not doing a webinar. And it's like, no, I don't want to talk. No, like I need to think for myself and see what feels right for me and how I can serve my audience that way. So really at the end of May, I was actually going to, well, I tried to bring someone on to help with content. And that's another thing <laughs> again, like more learnings. So basically I was like this summer and into now it's like, okay, what do I really want to be doing? I sat down did my clarity course. Basically it's like, okay, if I want to be focusing on the podcast, let's focusing on focus on that next level of guests that I want. What do I want to be introducing? Where do I want my content to be going? What like I'm living life again to some degree, like getting all of those things together. And like, how do I do this in a way that's sustainable? That's not going to burn me out. And so really I've been focusing on that and like really getting that schedule in where it's like, I know how many interviews I need to do. I know where I want the podcast to go. I'm here are the different blocks and things I want to talk about and just really focusing on that. And that way I have the products, but if I'm, but it's not just me, like me just building courses isn't, isn't the model for me anymore. And it's like, after this conversation, I know I'm still going to have energy. Like, this is exciting to me. I, I'm a conversationalist. This is what I love. And pulling out those pieces that are actionable for people are really exciting. And to me, it's way faster. And frankly, I think people get more sometimes than, than me sitting and taking months of my time to like build yeah. something. It just, it wasn't making sense. And it took me to be like, this is not making sense. But I get to the point where it's like, I'm, I like need to like burn out or hit like a rock bottom or be like, this doesn't make sense for me to stop to like have the conversation with everyone yes. that this doesn't make sense. <laughs> my ultimate dream, just that just, it just like brought to my, my ultimate dream in the professional world um, is to be paid to have people ask me questions in my areas of expertise and on the fly, unprepared, be able to give them answers that I know are going to bring them the value they need to get to where they want to go. Like the, the thought of like all the prep, all the building, all the everything, it is the necessary awful evil that goes into this whole thing. So I get that. Okay. But the, what's interesting to me, Brittany is, and, and it, it's funny, but it's not funny is, all of the decisions that you made up until that one were all to be more happy and to, to, to be more empowered, right? To, to choose your own path, to, to pave your own path. And you found yourself in a place of, I don't want to overstate this, but you were somewhat miserable in doing what, what you were doing. And it's like yep. what you set out to love became the thing you kind of despise. And I feel like so many people, so I cater to a lot of, I say, high performing individuals. They've either set that bar in some area of their life already, or they're, they are there right now. And they're in that place. It's a lot of men that I'm talking to. Some women are listening to that too, but also it's the women at home that are watching their husbands deal with this and they're in that place. And so if you, now that you've had some time to reflect on that and you think about, okay, so I started off on this path. I was clear about what I wanted. I, I, I was after it. And then it, it kind of, it got out of control or, or I lost grasp on what I wanted. So what were, as you look back, some of the, the things or the places that started to carry you in a direction that, that got you to that place of overwhelming chaos? I think it's that, I don't know if every entrepreneur can understand this, but it's, you become an entrepreneur because you want to, you believe in what you're doing and you want it so badly. And especially for like you, and because you do love it. And so sometimes you love it so much, you're willing to give all of your time to it. 
but then there's all of these things that come up. And so you're like, oh, okay, I can, you know, I got to That's just part of the process, right? Part of the journey, like shit's going to come up, but you don't have to take everything on yourself and keep, you kind of mentioned something about like hitting that level. I think, and I'm, I'm working on this as somebody who is an overachiever and has always been super ambitious. There is no, never, there's never enough. It's never enough. There's always more work to be doing. There's always more you could be doing. There's always more you could be improving. And I think it's really, again, going back to evaluating what's the life that I want to live, not what's the job. So I think that's been a big, that's been a big thing in my head where it's like, not only just where am I spending my time, but how is this moving the needle? How is this improving anything? And what, what do I want to be doing day to day that makes me happy? And how do I have my business fit into that as opposed to my life fitting into my business. I think I was so focused on the business. And I know that's probably a very, I don't know if that's a very male attitude about it, but then you have this pride in your business and you want to show up. And I totally get it. There's ego mixed into it. And that's why it's Mm -hmm. hard to walk away sometimes. But again, I, I feel like this has been something that I've been saying a lot recently. You, as far as I know, you only get one shot at this life what do you want to be doing with it? What, how do you want to be feeling? And I just keep coming back to that. Cause yeah, there's certain things where it's like, okay, I can do this and whatever. It's just going to take a little bit, but I can move through it. But then it's like, if it's going to keep coming up, coming up and I don't enjoy doing it and it's taking forever. Does that mean I need to outsource it? Does that mean I need to change something up? Does that mean I'm not in love with this business model? Mm-hmm. What are, what exactly is, is bothering me? Mm-hmm. So I think that's, it's just, putting in those spaces for, for self-reflection. And I think having people also to talk to about it, I think that's kind of a struggle too. I think it's great that you're building this community so you can have somebody kind of bounce things off of, or let you know that you're not crazy, that there's other people feeling like this. There's people feeling, you know, overwhelmed and underwater and, or probably like if your partners are telling you, this is a thing, because if your partners are telling you that like, Hey, you shouldn't be doing this, or maybe you should take a break to not, get mad at that or like process it for a second and think like there's, there's a reason that this is being suggested is like, am I working too much? Is there something that I could be doing better here? Is there something that I don't see? And so I think it's just really important to, to kind of take that in. Cause sometimes if your partner isn't an entrepreneur or whatever, like you're around people who aren't as uh, positive about, you know, the business space, you might not have to take what they say with a grain of salt. But I think, if everybody's telling you that you need to take a break, you probably need to take a break. <laughs> Maybe step yeah. away for a weekend. You know, it doesn't need to be a month. And was your was your husband making mention of that to you previous to his mom passing away that you needed to take a break? Oh yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> for sure. Uh, I think I think something that's like you were saying. It's like I I love what I do, and if you love what you do, that kind of especially in an environment where, and I want to make this clear, like I haven't been traveling as much. I still hadn't regained all of those outlets. Mm -hmm. So it's like the thing that I think about becomes is work. And I can say this, but I've been working on it. Like I am a workaholic. I think I get to, I get something out of it. It it fuels me because that's how, that's frankly, like how I've really related to a lot of people. It's how I meet a lot of people. It's, it's kind of my world. And I don't think that that should necessarily be the case. I think that it should be separate and you feel value completely separate from what you do. But because of what I do specifically, I feel so enmeshed in it. Like when I go on Instagram, when I pick up my phone, that, that it still works. I'm always thinking in that business mode. I'm always thinking about influence. I'm always thinking about these things naturally so for me recently, I've been very, started doing yoga. I, I wasn't a yoga person at all. And I was like, okay, I need to start doing this. Like it, everybody talked about it and just sort of forced myself to do it. I started meditating. I needed to do those things and start building in those habits again so mm-hmm. I could step away. But I was definitely to, like, oh yeah, even for my team, it's like, why are you thinking about this right now? Like, why are you, like, just stop. And it was hard. It's hard to stop. It's hard to stop when you get into that habit. And I think that's what 20, 2020 set me up to deal with things that were going to be a problem further down the line. And I'm glad that I'm, I'm dealing with them more now yeah. and when, when I can still do stuff about it. Well, and, and, and that makes you so much more valuable as a, as a definitely in, in your relationship as a partner, but as a business partner is, you know, that 
you have experienced or and or are experiencing those things because you know when you said it there's it's never going to be enough you know I, I i try to tell people all the time goals are at best a means to an end but they become such destructive um, metrics in our life if we're not careful and for you somebody that has this desire to highly to achieve and to perform at high levels you, even when it's healthy, that's what you're attaching to is the, the more that I do, the more that I'm accomplishing, that's what's fueling me. I'm helping more people. That's what's fueling yeah. me, but you can only do so much. And I don't care how many people you hire when you're in your spot, you become more taxed than every single one of them. And so we do get to those breaking points and it's wonderful to hear that you see that and you're working through that and can help other people do that. You know, that, that, that that's a huge part of what's going to help them get to a place where they can find that happiness and be empowered to do the things that they want to do and really have a good amount of influence in their circles uh, is when people see that they are successful, but in a healthy way. Yeah. And I want to be honest about it because it is hard to that's the thing. It's like when I've been doing, or if I've been working so much behind the scenes and involved in so many other pieces, you know, it is really hard for me sometimes to just like want to show up on Instagram stories. And especially when it's, you know, when right now where it's like, I'm the brand. And so if I'm that person, then it's, I need to have the energy. I don't want to go on and just be like, mm, like I can't half ass anything. Yeah. So for me to half ass it, like, isn't even going to happen in general. So yeah, it's like, okay, what do I need to do that I'm excited to show up? I'm excited to be talking about the things that I'm talking about, not just personal brand related, but really more like the lifestyle stuff. Because at the end of the day, the reason that I'm helping people create an influential life isn't just related to work. It's related to all of these other, like that includes health, wellness, spirituality for women, like style and beauty, all these other aspects. And that's what I'm excited to to talk about and interested to bring in experts and and talk about people who are influential outside of just the marketing space. Everybody generally I speak to always has, there's like a business lens to it because that's just mm -hmm. how I think, but really expanding outside of that. And I also know for myself that if that's where I'm headed, I need to be living my life too and have that balance to some degree. I think if you're an entrepreneur, you never really, I don't know anyone who fully has that balance. <laughs> I think people who say they do don't for the most part, but that's like, it's just that personality. And I don't know if you've, seen this at all. This is kind of a tangent, but uh, I've noticed that with entrepreneurs, I think there is a slight tendency to not to like a slight tendency to like depression and um, kind of just like, it's like a little bit of the darkness that fuels you to get ahead sometimes. Like, it's almost like, I don't know what to, what to call that. And I think at a certain point that negativity doesn't help you anymore. There's like a point. So I think like in the starting phases of entrepreneurship, I noticed like that helps fuel a lot of the like pushing and the motivation and the going, going, going. And then at a certain point, it just, that's like, it's not enough. And then you have to like actually learn how to be self-compassionate and do all these other, it's actually the complete opposite of what you were doing. <laughs> you actually need to do the complete opposite of everything you were doing and the mindset that you had in order to get to the next level. And I think that's a mind fuck. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think that we many times we're, we're trying to prove everybody, including ourselves, that we can do what we set out to do. And it's exhausting. And when we get to a place which I'm here right now, mentally, uh, spiritually and emotionally, though I though, though I have a new angst to grow uh, my business again. But, you know, I'm in this place now where. I don't even care anymore. Like I, I'm so focused on joy and the experience of life and counting the, the blessing of every moment I get to interact, to have a conversation like this, to, to go home and spend time with my wife or go out on a date or to get the time with my kids while I can. Um, and like, I still have a lot of pressure every single day. Like, you know, I got to grow. I got employees to feed and, and other things to do. And I want to do those things, but I can't always be in this tension of I've got to, I've got to, I've got to, because it is crushing. And unfortunately it outweighs any bit of joy you have. If that joy is not the primary thing that you're, that you're holding on to. 
And at the end of the day, again, with entrepreneurs, it's like you need to be well in order for your business to succeed, mm-hmm. to thrive, to be sustainable. So if you're not taking care of yourself in those ways, which I hadn't been for a long time, but now it's like, no, we're going, like I was telling you, we're going next week. Don't know exactly where we're going, but we're going away for our anniversary. We're going to do something. We're going to leave and not talk about work-related things. And I think it's it's also hard to really think clearly when you're constantly in it grinding and you don't stop stop to look. So I'm really excited to like, just stop. Cause I know as soon as I stop, I'll have so many more ideas. And my husband frankly does not want to talk to me about my business. <laughs> He's not <laughs> really interested. He would like to talk like he'd like to come home and not hear anything related to it. Just like, here's something random. And I was at a point where I was like, I didn't know. I literally had nothing else to talk about. Like we didn't want to talk about the business. I don't know what else, what else is going on, you know? <laughs> so forcing myself back into into the world and into hobbies and things like that is is really important. So if you don't have hobbies, I've been trying to find new ones and ones that I won't turn into a business. I think that's been the hardest <laughs> thing for me. Everything I like, I'm not joking. It's a, and it kill it kills everybody who knows me. They're like, just do, the can't you just like something and not try to turn it into something? I'm like, it's really hard. I just, I need to find some things that it's like, I just like for the pure joy of it. And I don't want to monetize it. So I think I I remember seeing that you like eating chocolate. Maybe you should just go eat more chocolate. I do. And anything now it's like, well, I can share what I like, but yeah, (laughs) sharing what I like with the shopping, sharing what I like. I mean, there's so (laughs) many ways again to monetize or like, I'm going to try not to just enjoy chocolate or enjoy whatever and not make it a thing. (laughs) That's good. That is so good. Well, Brittany, I mean, uh, uh, in, in one sense, we've covered such a crazy span of time and of experience, but you know, over and over this thread that I think ha- has been reiterated really at the forefront, which I, I, I've heard more than anything and really haven't said much is like, you clearly know who you are and you have made decisions to best support that person. Not that that's always going to work itself out in the best way possible, but we learn, we grow and we move on. And so I think really that personally is what's at the forefront of personal brand is that awareness of who we are and that desire to then communicate that out uh, in whatever manner we're going to. So I, I have loved hearing that. I've loved hearing over and over again, this desire to be happy and to be empowered. Um, I, I've said it so many times, right? Uh, before this conversation and now with this conversation, I have so much respect for you uh, and you know what you've done to this point. I love the way that you carry yourself um, in the professional world. You know, again, you know, from from what I've seen online, and I think that there's a lot of abuse that's that happens there. And I've never seen you step into that world, and so I have so much respect for you and the way you do that. I love the fact that you're no bullshit and you say it like it is, and just I have a ton of respect there. And um, and I even love and I. I actually haven't said this before, but I, I love, I know your, your relationship is, you know, with your husband is fairly private, which is great. But the little bits that I have seen, I love the fact that you are a wonderful wife to your husband in a day and age where that's not valued uh, uh, very often. I just love the fact that you love him and respect him and seem to enjoy him so much. And it seems like it goes in both directions. And so I just think it's great that you're modeling uh, just what it really means to to be successful and to achieve at a high level in all areas of life. And that, that, that bar looks different for people, but man, you've just done such a great job and it's an honor to call you a friend and to be able to have this conversation with you. So thank you. Well, thank you. And I just want to, you said a few things there. Thank you so much again for all of those kind words. But I was thinking in terms of the self-awareness piece, I think people need to give themselves the grace that self-awareness is a moving target. So no matter how well you know yourself, things are just going to happen over time that, you know, what you thought you liked three years ago or what you've decided today, that path might look different in three years. It might change and you need to be ready and willing to kind of to shift with that and to to lean in and I guess surrender to that and make the changes that you need so that it's still sustainable. So it doesn't get you to a place where you don't, you don't want to do it anymore or you feel resentful. And as far as the private, the like privacy of my relationship, I love sharing that stuff, but he's so behind the scenes and that's such my, um, I don't know if we ever talked about this, but that's, he's so behind the scenes that, uh, 
just getting him to give like little glimpses is always like fun for me, but I know he <laughs> hates that so much. We're so polar opposite in that way that I just, it's all out of res- People are like, oh, you're really private with your private life. I'm like, I'm, I'm respectful of what, of him and his comfort level and what he wants to, to be doing. And he's been so supportive of me and my style of, of working and, and everything that I've been doing. And he's fine with me doing it my way. And I let him do his thing. And I think that's been really helpful in our marriage that we are very different, but also we like similar things. So we're not stepping on each other's toes that way. I really like that. He's very, um, he's just very comfortable with me doing, doing my thing. He's never like, Oh, you shouldn't be doing that or Oh, this or Oh, that he doesn't step on my toes. He's happy to let me shine and do my thing and talk about not work after. (laughs) (laughs) Not work. I like that. Talk about not work, anything but work. (laughs) Exactly. That's good. Uh, okay. So, um, I want to make sure that people do know how to engage with you. We'll put all of that in the show notes, but I know your website, BrittanyCrystal.com, which is B R I T T A N Y K R Y S T L E.com. So I know I, I remind, I remember that. So go there. That's where you can find beyond influential, the podcast as well. Um, any other place that, that they should be, um, that you are. Well, Brittany Crystal, you'll find me on LinkedIn. You'll find me on Instagram. Just hit me up and let me know what you thought. But yeah, every if you want to email me and my team, just go to BrittanyCrystal.com and you'll find all the links to, to everything. But please let me know that, yeah, what you thought. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and I got to say again, there are a few podcasts that I still listen to today. I think there's just so much noise out there that I've gotten uh, sick and tired of just about all of it. Uh, Beyond Influential is one of very, very few. And when I say very, very few, the only other consistent podcast that I listen to uh, is Rogan's podcast. So if that says anything for all you people that know how much I talk about Rogan all the time, um, you should know that there's some really damn good stuff uh, on Brittany's podcast, and it's worth spending the time to listen to with every episode that uh, that she uh, that she shares. And then, um, so uh, her clarity course, um, Brittany, do you mind saying uh, what the cost of that course is right now? So actually, I can give a two hundred dollar coupon to your two hundred dollars off for your uh, folks. Okay. Um, but it's at prettycrystal.com slash clarity. You can check out the course and it's normally six ninety seven, but for you guys, it'll be four ninety seven. All right. So there you go. So I, I'm going to, that means I'm going to match that. So for the first person that registers for the course and proves to me, uh, that they signed up for it, send it to me and I will PayPal you or Venmo you another $200 for the first person that wants to go through that course. Um, this is the type of the type of stuff that you may say, I've done that. It's so basic. It, it is way more valuable than you give it credit for. Brittany herself said she went back through her I was own say, course. I went back, <laughs> it's like pared down to exactly, you might think you know it, but everyone comes back and they're like, oh shit. Like this is, it got me thinking again in a different way. And it's not just like fluff questions in between. It's like literally the most important questions in the right order that you should be asking yourself related to positioning yourself online. You're going to come back to it again and again. It works to help you sustain on every platform. So many people are like, oh, I want to grow on Instagram or I want to grow on here. This helps you get that whole overview. So that way, you know exactly what messaging you're putting out there. So that way, if you do want to outsource, you do want to hire somebody you know exactly like where you stand because so many people just want to hire the copywriter. They want to hire somebody to help them with content. If you're not clear on your own brand to be able to help them, they can't do their own job, their job. So if you're spent, you waste 10 grand on an expensive copywriter and you need to do this work anyway, they're going to make you do this. So it'll save you so much time. All right. So there you go. So she gives you 200. I'll, I'll send you back another 200 bucks. Somebody better hurry up and do this once this episode goes live. (laughs) All right. So on that, you guys, I mean, there's just been so much here. I I think that there's a ton to take away. There was a lot that I was personally impacted by, and it's going to make, it's making me rethink a lot of what I'm even doing right now. And I'm going through a a lot of change in my business. So again, Brittany, thank you so much. It's been a huge, huge pleasure. You guys make sure you hit Brittany up. You know where to find me. And as I say to every single person that I can, be you, be happy, be authentic. Thanks, guys. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Authentic Conversations. If you are ready to live the life you've dreamed of, I'm here to help. Head to ryanjamesmiller.com slash podcast to begin your journey. 
And if this episode impacted you in any way, pay it forward by sharing it with someone you know. I'm Ryan James Miller, and I'll see you next time on Authentic Conversations.